GPT. What? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. I am releasing episodes regularly on the subject of GPT-3 and large language models and also other AI trends. So you folks have asked and I have listened. Today I will be introducing GPT-3 as a basic concept for people that did not have the opportunity to come across it. Forgive me for not introducing it any sooner. I guess it was because I was just sitting in my cozy bubble for nine months, writing a book about it and thinking about it over breakfast and just assuming that that's a given. But of course it isn't and I'm super happy if you're new to the game. So here it comes. There are actually many angles you can try to explain GPT-3 from, but roughly speaking, in the area of natural language processing, NLP, which is a field of AI, there are these AI beings called language models. I believe many of us can recall this magical moment where we are typing something on our phone, you start with the first word and then your phone comes up with a reasonable completion to the sentence that you're trying to create. Or some of us have voice assistants at home, like Alexa, for example, and they enjoy having a fun, though quite limited conversation with them. And I guess most of us are using Google to some degree to search for the information online. All these things are good use cases for language models and language models are being used in these applications. Language models are basically algorithms that are tasked with assigning probability to a sequence of words in a given text. Simple language models can look at a given word and then predict the word or words that are most likely to follow it based on the statistical analysis of existing text sequences. Hold on tight. In order to create language models that successfully predict sequences of words, we need to train them on large data sets. The tendency generally is that with more and more data available out there via internet and other sources, we are able to create bigger data sets and we are able to better train the models. Before GPT-3, language models were generally designed to perform only one specific task. And it could be text generation, text summarization, classification, and so on. Now where GPT-3's magic comes is that it is able to solve an array of language-based tasks and it is able to move very freely and easily between different types of styles, types of purposes of the text, and it's really agile when it comes to performing these tasks. The agility with which GPT-3 solves these tasks is something we haven't seen before. And that's why it's such a big deal. The model itself was released in 2020 by company OpenAI. And it was an attempt of this company to create an artificial intelligence algorithm that is more general to the existing alternatives and that is able to perform more tasks, which it succeeded at. Personally, I find it very useful to understand what GPT-3 stands for. So let me break it down for you. GPT-3 stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer 3. So let's look at the generative part. Generative signals a very simple concept. It basically means that GPT-3 generates text based on the data that it was trained on. Pre-trained. Here I want to spend a little bit more time so that you understand what model training is and how it relates to GPT-3 performance. Whoever tried before knows very well that it takes a lot, and I mean uncomfortably, a lot of time to train a model. So being able to train the model once and then reuse it would save a lot of time and effort. And this is exactly how pre-trained models came to being. Pre-trained model is basically a model that was trained by somebody else and now is available out there in the public space. Instead of building a model from scratch to solve your problem, you are using the model that was trained on 
another general problem as a starting point. You can take this pre-trained model and give it a more specific training with a curated data set that is specifically designed for your use case. Pre-trained model will never be 100% accurate right off the bat, but it saves you from reinventing the wheel and it saves time and improves performance of your model. Now, to train a model, you need a data set and the type and size of the data will vary depending on what you're trying to solve. In case of GPT-3, it was trained on five massive corpuses of text that include articles from Wikipedia, different types of websites scrapped from the internet, different types of books, even code repositories. And altogether, this corpus of text consists of nearly trillion words of different style, different purpose, even different types of language, meaning English language, but also other languages and even programming languages as well. So having been trained on this massive amount of data, GPT-3 turned out to be really savvy when it comes to language-based tasks. And now it can successfully tackle them without much additional training. Now let's look at Transformer. So to give you a broader context, as you're watching this, researchers within AI field are working on creating new model architectures. And this is because they want the models to be better and better at solving tasks. For example, they may want to improve the way the language models are automatically translating text from English to Polish, my maternal tongue. And so whenever you hit Google Translate, you will be able to have a really sweet nice error-free automatic translation from one language to another. Researchers sweat day and night to work on solution for this. And so in 2017, in the paper titled Attention is all you need, they published architecture handsomely called Transformer. I think generally speaking, what you need to understand about Transformer is two things. One is that Transformer is basically a model that processes a sequence of text all at once instead of a word at a time. This mechanism is called sequence to sequence. Second, it has a powerful mechanism to understand the connections between these words called attention. Now, if you're on the nerdier side of the spectrum and want to understand more, I really encourage you to dive deeper into the videos about transformer architecture, for example, by Jay Almar. He has a fantastic YouTube video really breaking down what transformer architecture is I am linking it down below. Jay also has a great and famous blog that explains the transformer architecture, so check it down below. I also really enjoyed the analysis of Yannick Kilsher of the original transformer paper Attention is all you need, so check it out if you want to really drill down into the details of this. I am also writing more about the transformer architecture in my GPT-3 manual book for O'Reilly, so I am leaving links to all these resources below. And three, basically means that GPT-3 is a third iteration of models that OpenAI has been working on, and this third iteration really caught the attention of everybody. There was GPT-2 that already spurred some interest in general scientific and developer community, but it was the GPT-3 that really hit the sweet spot for everybody. You may wonder why GPT-3 is such a hot model right now. There are a few things to it. First, because it was trained on this massive amount of data using this really cutting edge architecture, it is able to predict the next words or sentences and generate sentences if you give it a simple example or simply a command to do so. It's extremely good at variety of tasks that are text-based. One of the mind-boggling and fabulous things is that you can communicate with it using natural human language. OpenAI has this interface called Playground, where you can basically talk to GPT-3 using simple plain English sentences and express whatever the task you wanted to solve and it will go and solve it for you. It is very versatile and good at tasks like text generation, text summarization, classification, search, and many more. There is a crowd of brave new developers that are using GPT-3 via OpenAI API to plug it into different products. You can see them building successful marketing copy generation platforms, virtual storytelling and games, 
chatbots, email writing assistants and general writing assistants, an analyst that helps to process customer feedback in the form of text, and there are many more products that are currently being built with the help of GPT-3. And they're gaining real traction because this model has capabilities that we haven't seen before. I think especially if you are somebody that likes to innovate, if you are somebody building products, you can get very excited about it. And whether you're on the business, design, sales, dev side of things, this is something that you would definitely want to check out. Especially if your setup involves some language-based tasks. It's a super fun experience to interact with GPT-3 directly, so I encourage you to check it out. I'm going to leave the link below to the OpenAI API. And I also want you to know that apart from GPT-3, there are now a handful of really cool APIs and language models that are being developed as an alternative to it. So you may also want to check out other services as well. And that's it in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are more hungry for knowledge, I encourage you to check out my video on what people often get wrong about GPT-3. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care.